Okay. Hey everyone. <clears throat> I just wanted to continue my topic and my lesson that I talked about, uh, not the balloon video I just released, but the other one, anger management tips on anger management. I didn't finish my list, <clears throat> but I kind of got kind of far, got further than I thought. Um, I end up doing 12 of them. Um, let me show you here. So let's go through them really quick. Um, if you're watching this video after the last, <clears throat> uh that works best but i'm just going to go through them really quickly so i i don't have them in like some kind of order of importance but they're uh all all in, <laughs> important but i if i would say one is the most important it's this one so number one is know your number you remember like we said that um <clears throat> your emotion it, it has this um uh, intensity scale and the more you go up in intensity the more um, loss of control you have because you're, you're in that fight mode you're, you're, your blood is more going to your muscles and you your mind and your body believe that there is a threat that needs to be managed or there is something that <clears throat> may require physical force right so my thing I always say to everyone, my adult clients, my kids uh, that I see, if you're not in danger, you need to stay calm and you need to stay below five. And you need to use these other things on the list if you're not in danger. <clears throat> so if you know that you're getting uh, up there, five, six, seven, you, let's just say we have take deep breaths here to relax, take a break, come back to it later, use mental distraction skills, using things to um, change your focus, which will calm us down. Deep breaths will tell our body that we're safe and we can relax and calm down. Taking a break and doing like mental distraction or number nine, get up and move. If you're at past a five, go walk, go to the gym, shoot some basketball for a little bit, or just really walking and getting a drink of water and just calming down a little bit will get you below five. Um, <clears throat> so, number one is really important. Number two, understanding your anger is normal. It is not something that you have to always think, believe that it is this bad thing, this demon or devil or, or whatever. It's not that it's something that you should feel guilty about if you have anger. Now, what you may feel guilty about is what you do with it, right? If I get angry and I take it out on my friend or my family or my uh, or my girlfriend or wife or whoever, yes, feel guilty about that. But you don't have to feel guilty about experiencing anger. It's just, it's normal, it happens. Now there could be situations that there's a little, there is a frustration, whatever it is, and maybe the appropriate emotion is that two, we'll call it frustration, but then you get an eight you catastrophize it in your mind somehow or you blow it up you know uh, to this catastrophize situation it doesn't need to be that way that can happen but it's that's the intensity of anger just you being frustrated or, or getting angry is not a bad thing it's telling you something it's in, emotions or information okay number three <clears throat> addressing and expressing your anger appropriately. So that goes with any emotion, but anger, most importantly. Um, if we don't, if we just bottle it up in things that cause us frustration and stress, and we don't have a healthy way to exp express those things, and they bottle up, we're going to go to work or go home or go to school at a four or five and then someone says something led to us and we're going to blow up on them, right? And they're like, whoa, where did that come from, right? And that's all happened to all of us, right? We're already aggravated about something when we get to school. And our friend, said, friend maybe your friend says something that we found disrespectful. And it wasn't really anything, but then we snap on them, right? So we don't need to bottle that up. We need to learn to express those things and talk those, those things out. We're not all alone and isolated. 
we have people most everyone has someone that they can talk to um, okay number four really important have an empathy and healthy perspective which it would include try and have empathy and understanding people's intention because a lot of times we just have misunderstandings right think of when you're a kid and your parent tells you no we don't like being told no right uh, but if we can understand okay they're telling me no that I need to go to bed at 10 because I have school in the morning I that's disappointing and I'm a little frustrated because I've I wanted to stay up and do something but I'm not going to I'm not going to escalate my anger because I understand they have a reason right and so understand having that empathy can create some patience number five really important I don't care if you're at a, a two or eight or nine or ten you must and need to take responsibility for your anger because there is such a thing called controlled rage meaning like it's if I was let's just say if I was feeling threatened and I had to manage this <clears throat> danger with something maybe I was fighting someone I still have the I'm not blacking out even when I'm nine or ten and going to start like full frenzy rage mode and after I beat up whoever it is that's attacking me I'm gonna turn to my wife and beat her up too right no you still have some control right you're not really thinking clearly what happens when you're in that intense state of anger you're not thinking about the consequences for your actions later right you still kind of have your values and your morals with you you still have somewhat of both those filters but they're just very compromised because you're in crisis you're in fight mode but even so like in a court of law like they'll understand <clears throat> you got that angry and why you did this but they're not gonna say okay uh you know slate cleaned you were just really really angry so we're gonna excuse you from robbing that bank right most of the time they consider those things but you're just not you know justified just because you got angry we already kind of said six and seven real quick um, we said eight <clears throat> nine number ten is kind of like empathy we talked about so before you get angry right search that search that empathy before you <clears throat> jump to the conclusion that they're doing something that's trying to hurt you understand their opinion and their where they're coming from first don't worry about if they understand where you're coming from don't worry about that first just understand their point of view listen to them first and then once they feel like you've listened to them they're gonna be more open to listen to you and hear you out that's where you can compromise and collaborate where you guys can either both get what you want or you guys can meet in the middle and do something in the middle and even if they, they don't was most teachers and parents will do that they'll collaborate will compromise then there's a pretty good reason I would say give people the benefit of the doubt that they're telling you you have to do something whatever it is like you need to clean your room right I understand that's not fun always but you have to like there's no the compromise could be I'll clean half of it today and half of it tomorrow or the collaboration could be I'll clean it now um, and you can give me an allowance over it or, or something like that right I don't know <laughs> just kind of think of an example so those are the first 10 um, and I'm on Photoshop for anyone who wants to know what program I'm using um, so he said include others in their support system I use the example of a bug's life <clears throat> where well that's bullying <laughs> but still same you know same things go a lot of times when we're younger we need redirection we need prompts right we're not able to internally think oh my scale I'm my number six and you know what I mean so it helps us to have people who can keep us accountable who can gives us redirection reminders um, not saying we need to depend on them but help, having the people help us and and 
goes with expressing your emotions. Um, include others in your support system for your anger. Number 12, we briefly said this last video. So <clears throat> I'll probably do a video just on being assertive in communication styles. But just understand, in a lot of frustration, frust ugh, frustrating situations usually involves conflict, disagreements with people. So learning to be assertive, which, which all that means is I'm protecting myself from you trying to hurt me, but my intention is not to actively try to hurt you back. Like say if you said something I didn't like, and I'm like, well, so you da 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 da, right? I try to hurt some hurt you back in some way. Now, like I said before, when we intensify in our emotion, <clears throat> we are not thinking of long-term consequences, and we say stuff we don't mean really, or we just say stuff in a moment we want to hurt them back, and then we're like later on like crap oh i messed up and a lot of times you can really break someone's trust and then it'll take you a long time to earn that back so it's just the best practice to be assertive when you can now that's not saying that being assertive you may not have to be physically uh defend yourself in some point right um, if someone is <clears throat> physically attacking you, I think we talked a little bit of this about our bullying video, so I'm not going to go on it too much, but assertive is just like a style of communication. Uh, I could be very stern with you like this, but I'm not yelling at you and pointing and all this stuff. And also, also I'm not pay being passive and looking down and acting like I'm scared and letting you get what you want. I'm going to look you right in my, your eye and, you know, I'm like, I'm going to talk to you. I'm like... Uh, person to person or man to man, right? Okay. So I got my list here. Uh, next one. Let's see what we got here. Easy. But our writing and reflecting can help you. So this can help you express how you feel. <clears throat> this can help you... Um, <clears throat> Kind of understand maybe I'll say the next one your anger triggers your anger buttons <coughs> sorry <laughs> it's kind of dry mouth they can help you reflect of what brought that anger that experience of that that anger on or what maybe you can look back well how can I've done that differently what kind of these coping skills these distraction or taking a break or deep breaths or whatever it is could have used to make the situation better. Could I have, could I have taken a break, and that would have, you know, um, changed the outcome of that situation. <clears throat> so right inflecting does both those things. So it helps you express, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of people have, <clears throat> they write things down better, and then reread them maybe a couple of days later, or read them to their family member, or their friend, or their. Uh, their spouse or whoever, girlfriend, boyfriend, <clears throat> help them get what they're trying to say. Because sometimes in the moment, it's just hard to talk about how you feel or what you want to say. So sometimes it's good to like write it down and reflect and, and so you can be very clear of where you're coming from and what you want to say. <clears throat> okay. So we got writing. Oh, here's a, here's a good one. Well, let's go with what I just said. Know your anger buttons. And I'll get to my next one. <laughs> um, this is just good because I call these like knowing your pet peeves, right? Like everyone's got pet peeves. Like, and what I mean by that is like things that are just going to aggravate me faster than someone else. And those come from just you learned learn associations that things that happen through my life experience that, <clears throat> that I connected with just ooh, anger right it could be someone trying to um, talk to me with their with their mouthful right one of my pet peeves is when someone's talking with their mouth open and I literally feel or see food come out of their mouth and hit me in the face 
that would probably get a lot of people frustrated, but I, <clears throat> well, that would, that would, I would have to take a break <laughs> or get out of the situation because, um, and, and there's probably a connection with some point in my childhood I felt disrespected deeply when someone did that. So that's an example of knowing your anger button triggers. And so you can create a plan on how to avoid those if you can, or have your ways to cope with it if you have to deal with it, right? If you have to kind of go through it. If I'm <clears throat> in a meeting with someone who does that, how do I address that, right? Honestly, thinking about it, I would just assertively address that, um, that, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, how would I assertively address that? I would just say, hey, listen, I, uh, I know we're in this meeting, we're trying to get things done, but um, I get really frustrated when uh, people eat with their mouth open. It's just kind of like manners and how I was grew up. Sorry if that is offending in any way. I don't know, some, maybe something like that. <clears throat> or you could just wear a face shield. <laughs> it's, I, could, I could do it too. Uh, but you, sometimes you have to be very creative. But you, it helps knowing your anger buttons and triggers first. Okay. Um, we'll go with the one I have in front of me. Knowing the consequences... For your actions. So this can help us maintain our anger. Um, so like in school, if you don't manage your anger well and you have a tantrum, if your school and your teachers are doing the right thing and your parents and your work and your boss, you're going to have consequences so you don't do that. This is part of our mental filter process. That and values, but knowing the consequences for things can help you manage your anger because you're that it's the uh, ego part of you that wants to keep you um, in the direction you you need to be going to meet your needs in the most appropriate helpful way um, so um, a lot of times this could include um, if I'm getting really angry but I want to it, I want to manage it because I know the outcome. If I don't manage it well, I could be, you know, not only expelled from school, but it could long have long term bad habits, right? So know your consequences for your actions. If you don't control your anger, is a good thing, right? Okay, we'll have to. That. Okay. Number 16. Um, so I know before in my first few videos, I was just kind of talking, but I feel like for a lot of you, this could help you see these things, write them down. Um, and so you, you don't, maybe you're in your car listening or you're somewhere else. So um, let me know if anyone watches, if anybody ever watches these videos, which way you kind of prefer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try doing these lecture. If I have things I want you to write down, I'm going to put them in Photoshop. Okay. <clears throat> Another good tip. Use I statements. So what this can do is... <clears throat> help you clearly express how you feel to someone, right? So they have a full understanding where you're at in your number and why you are at in your number. So, and you can even say that, like if they know this kind of language too. Um, someone could say, Mr. Anthony, or Anthony, I, I'm at a six right now because I saw you call me out for this and I felt really disrespected. So that was great. It's like, so Mr. Anthony, I feel angry. I'm at a six, and it tells me why. 
So there's no guessing, there's no misunderstandings. I clearly, I'm, I'm getting where they're coming from. And so I'll, I'll probably say something like, okay, so I heard you say you're at six, you're angry, and it, it's because you felt like I was disrespecting because I'm pulling you out or because you were doing something in class. So what I would probably say is like, you know, that's not my intention. So when I have to redirect you in class, I don't want to, but you have to understand I have to kind of control the chaos in the room because if I don't kind of nip those things in the butt there, they can, the class gets out of control. So if I ever have to redirect you, it's not coming from a place where I'm trying to disrespect you. I'm just trying to kind of get control of the room. And I'll have a conversation with that person. So it would go just like that. But it would start with them using a nice statement. You can do the, so just, I feel blank because blank. Okay. Um, did we say understand? I think we did. <clears throat> Number 17. Habit of encouraging others. So, why is that important? The habit of encouraging others. <clears throat> so, it kind of goes back to that support system part, right? So, we have to deal with difficult things almost every day. Some, in some sort of difficulty. So, whenever we d kind of cope with that difficulty or disappointment, <clears throat> having someone encourage us can, can keep us from getting a higher in that number that we don't want to go if we're not like like i said we're not in danger and we need to because staying calm is going to help us problem solve how to deal with this this discomfort or this disappointment better so if i get in the habit of always just encouraging other people and you can even say compliment like say if someone dealt with something really well a disappointment i'll say man you you did so well with getting out in the game i'm so proud of you gets rewarded and it's in that praise or it will associate that reward to the experience <clears throat> that learned association and so hopefully next time I, I even if i replace praise them or not they'll still do it but it's the same thing and then when i encourage them so if i get out and, and you know if i've had a challenge with um getting upset by getting out they'll probably do the same thing for me right and that'll create that same experience and connection for me okay so that one's very important. Um, we kind of said this one. And clear up miscommunication. And I totally butchered that. So, basically, <clears throat> when someone says something to us, we're going to try our best not to jump to any conclusions. And if we're, before we jump to those conclusions, we're just going to get a clear understanding. Because most situations that <clears throat> intensify our anger, it's like... In the classroom, my example about a kid feeling disrespected and they were at a six, and then talking to me about this later can clear up that misunderstanding that I'm not there to try to just pick on them. I'm there to try to manage the room. It had nothing to do with any of that, trying you know to single that person out. So this can be helpful in a school setting, a work setting, relationships, all forms of communication, friendships. Like it's good to to clear up those if misunderstandings, right? If you feel it, it goes back to expressing, it's good to express how you feel. Now, there is a balance with that because <clears throat> if you're really insecure and sensitive, if you constantly bring up, hey, you know, I feel blah, 
because you did this, hey, that can maybe exhaust someone and they can sense that insecurity and lack of confidence. And say if you're in a relationship with someone, they can find that not appealing and things like that. But I'm going to say if, if it goes with balance, clearing up miscommunication and interpretations can be very helpful with managing your anger. Because it, what it does is reduce those, those resentment and grudges that you have because then you'll follow up and talk to that person you felt hurt or, and then you're frustrated because of this. So that's why it's important. Okay. I think I got two more left. <clears throat> so I said, know your anger triggers. Get out of the situation. Know your scales, your breaths. Mm. Oh, here we go. This is one of the last two. Learning to let go and move on. And I'm going to say learn to laugh. Learn to use humor. Um, because, and I use this, this saying a lot in my own life and in, in my work. I'll, I'll say, let's just not sweat the small stuff, right? Because if you look for it, you can find something to be disappointed about or to get angry about. You could find it easily. There's multiple things that happen throughout a day. But if you learn to those little things that, you know, can disappoint you or, or get you frustrated, if you don't learn to resolve and let those things go, they'll bottle up. Maybe we talked about coming into work or school at a five. You don't learn to address those things and, and let those little things go, especially um, then they'll, you know, build and snowball. And that's when you have those that will explode and take your anger out and probably on someone. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, humor, you know, there's a saying that I have, uh, I used to work at a, like a hospital for, uh, you know, like a mental health hospital. The saying was, if you didn't laugh about some of the stuff that you saw or heard, then you just cry, right? I'm not saying crying is not an appropriate emotion that we should mask at with humor, but the little things, it's good to learn to let go and and just try to let, you know have a laugh. Like, and this a lot of times includes myself. Instead of me worried about being being insecure about something, I'll just laugh myself. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just like, oh man, I can't believe I did that. You know. So learning to let the little things go and just kind of moving on. And little things, again, example of that is just maybe you didn't win in a game you played. Maybe you uh, didn't get to ha go to the, to, to the restaurant you won for lunch, right? You just kind of let those little things go so you, and just move on, right? So really that's just kind of building that re resilience to the small disappointments. So lastly... <clears throat> And one of the most important things that we can kind of go over, and number 20, just because you're angry doesn't mean you're right. Drop the mic, right? That's probably not what a mic sounds like when it drops, but... <laughs> so... Basically, what this means is you feel an emotion doesn't mean that that emotion is makes the situation true, right? So a good example would be someone could be terrified of a grasshopper, right? Silly thing to be terrified, but I'm pretty sure someone out there in the world is terrified of grasshopper, like one grasshopper. Is that a real threat? I'm going to say probably not in most 99.9 .9 situations. Not a real threat. Now, is it okay and appropriate to be terrified of a lion? Probably, right? <laughs> Unless you raise this thing all by yourself. Even then, I'd be terrified of a lion because it's a wild animal. <laughs> but um, So, if I get angry, I have to stop and tell myself that just because I'm frustrated and I'm angry at this person doesn't mean I have the right perspective on the situation. It doesn't mean I'm in the right. I could be. 
I could be right on. Um, I could have what I call righteous anger, that I, I have a good reason to be angry, and I need to use that anger to motivate me to do something about it. It's like the, I think it was the two or three in our list, using anger to, to motivate us to get positive results, which is the reason why we have anger, right? It's one of the reasons. Someone makes fun of me for my weight, I might get to the point and get angry, and instead of what I would really, really desire to do is maybe beat them up or something, I'm going to use that and fuel my my rage and motivate me to go to the gym or work out or, or do whatever. Um, but situations will happen where you feel an emotion and it feels true to you, but you have to question if it is true. Like the grasshopper, like being terrified of a grasshopper. It's, it's, you know, it's how we feel is how we feel. But then we have to ask ourselves, <clears throat> you know, this is not, this is not, re this is not reality. This is not the reality of the situation that I, I need to be terrified of this creature, this grasshopper. So the same thing goes with um, overgeneralizing of t being terrified of snakes, right? Now, I think being scared of snakes is kind of like, um, an instinct right because some snakes are dangerous and I would say if you don't you shouldn't pick up probably any snake right unless you 100% know what you're doing um, <clears throat> but there's snakes that are not dangerous and we we need to respect them give them space we don't need to be terrified um, there's a whole other topic I can, I'll just get into when we talk about fear and healthy fear and things like that. But we're going to keep it there. Um, it's called emotional reasoning. Um, just knowing that that I might need to take a step back if I'm angry and really figure out if this anger is, is justified, if, it is, if it's righteous, right? Okay. So I don't know how long this video has been. Um... But I hope someone gets something out of here. Like I said, there's 20 tips here to keep in mind to manage your own anger. And when you <clears throat> really are motivated, I say you have to be you have to be invested and interested to want to do something different. That let's just say if, if my anger, if I'm I I I have poor anger management skills, and so I I see this video, I'm watching these things. I need to really be interested, invested to the point where I want to have action and do something about it. <clears throat> and out of these tips, you will need to create your own plan of how I'm going to manage my anger better. So you need to make first a goal. Let's just say my goal is to manage my anger better <clears throat> in work or school that I don't take it out on anyone. Or I don't give up as easily, right? And then after you make that goal, you need to make an, what I call action plans or game plans. And out of these things, this is what I'm going to do different, right? When this trigger happens or this situation comes up, I will do this differently. And I will do this right here. And <clears throat> it, could be e it could be easy as, you know, as just when I feel past a five, I'm going to take a break and then get back to it. That doesn't mean I'm going to take a three-hour break and never go back to whatever it is. Maybe I'll take a five-minute break and go back. Maybe <clears throat> um, when I, I'm dealing with disagreements or conflict, I'm going to be more assertive and use I statements and try to understand them first before I try to just, you know, get them to understand my point and not listen to them all. Maybe that will help you. Maybe me thinking about the consequences before I do something like say I'm angry that I don't have any money and so but I, I'm gonna think I don't want to spend 20 years in prison for robbing a bank because I'm not gonna do that maybe that's your answer <clears throat> what plan is worse for you is not gonna be it's gonna be different than me I know I personally I like to verbally talk about how I feel I don't I'm not a big journal or writer I think it's an amazing thing to have um, I used to uh, do like a little, um, what, what do I call that? Uh, I would talk into my phone and it would store my, 
a recorder, a voice recorder, and I would listen to it later. I do, I would do that. But <clears throat> um, there, are, it's all going to be different. Like your plan is going to be different than my plan. Your game plan. Um, so we'll end there. I hope everyone is having a great day. It's right now it's that it's Sunday Easter, and it's kind of more towards in the day. And uh, but I hope everyone has people in their life that they feel connected and supported to. Um, that you trust someone enough to be open with them. I really hope um, that you have things you do in your life that you find passion and you enjoy. If you don't have those things that I just said, find them. Those are important human needs that, that everyone needs and, and you deserve it as a person. You know what I mean? You enjoy it through this life experience, that journey that we were going through. <clears throat> you, um, out of this journey, you know, there's, there's going to be difficult times and disappointments, like I said before. But there's things that you need to include in your self-care plan that bring you joy and, you, and you're and passionate about and you like to do. Um, and so I hope that everyone watching this has those things. Um, so, uh, any questions, any comments, put them down below. And I really hope you guys have a great day. Be safe. And um, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Okay? Alright. Take care, guys.